Alright, hello everyone, it's GSTAR321 here again, and we are back with more Cry of Fear on the PC. Picking up where we left off in the last video, we are here in Chapter 4 still. However, this is Part 2 of Chapter 4, because like I said, Chapter 4 is a very lengthy chapter. Now, in the last video, the Doctor escaped by going through this door here. As you can see, it's locked. This door is locked by an electric lock. To get it open, we need to collect two fuses and put them in place. Once we do, we can go through and continue following him. So, I'll just show you my objectives. If I press B, retrieve two fuses to Hanson Square. One is located in Saxon Avenue. That's correct. We already know where one of the fuses is located, and that's on Saxon Avenue. So we'll go back and collect that one. But for the other fuse, we have to go ahead and search for it. So, let's do it. Can't pick up that syringe. Now straight away here, I'm going to equip the rifle. Because once you go down here on the train platform, there will be... Yep. As you can see, a few fly gears to take care of. Just be careful of that blood projectile, you don't want to get hit by it, especially on Nightmare difficulty. Absolutely dangerous on Nightmare. Okay, so we're going to go through this door. And this will take us outside. Don't even bother going to the left there, that gate is always locked. So we'll go through this door. Now be careful here because, okay, sometimes there's a faster hiding in the corner right there, just waiting for you to walk past like this, at which point she will attack you, but she's not there now, so just be prepared for it, you know, because it can give you a bit of a fright. There's usually always at least one, yeah, there we go, there's one there, sometimes there's two, Yep, here we go. Let's take care of her. My god, that scream is just atrocious. Okay, so we can go one of two ways. If we go right through that door there, that will basically take us back to the Waspet Gardens. And we need to go through there to go back to Saxon Avenue and collect that fuse. But I'm going to do that last. First, I'm going to go this way to the left, Preston Road, and collect the other fuse. Now be careful, there's sometimes a suicider out here. Okay, he's not there. I was ready. <laughs> I basically just sprinted because I was hoping he was going to be right here, but he wasn't. And I wanted him to shoot himself. That's my technique taking care of suiciders on normal difficulty. It's slower. What the fuck? What the hell happened to him? He just ran through the bus. Come on, get out of here. Okay, there's sometimes a suicide. Yeah, there he is. Look at him. He's waiting. Can you see him? Just. You can see his head. Yeah, I can't shoot through the glass, unfortunately. Okay, that's no problem. So we're in a bus now, and as you can see, there's an M16 rifle here, and a tape recorder right there. I'm going to get the M16 rifle on the way back, because we have to come back here and go through the Waspet Gardens. I'm going to use it in the Waspet Gardens area, because there are a lot of slowers that spawn there. So on my way back, I will go ahead and collect the M16 rifle. Let's have a look at this. Now how do I get back to grab my fuse? I also need another one. Yep, that other one it's referring to is the fuse that we're going for now. Okay, let me go ahead and kill this bastard. Or should I say, let him kill himself. <laughs> Lovely. He didn't shoot me either. Not once. Okay, nothing else here. Let's go up the stairs. 
I should mention that I don't really want to mention it now because we haven't encountered these enemies yet but sometimes you will encounter a very tall enemy in this specific area appropriately named the taller but he's not here sometimes he spawns sometimes he doesn't in this area don't worry about it I will talk about the taller enemies later because there will be quite a few populating the waspit gardens okay so what we're gonna do here is go straight down to the bottom all the way down the staircase because look at this Ah, oh, fuck I'm full let me drop the rifle to pick it up you got the Glock tactical light fuck yeah it's about time I'll show you it a small lightweight flashlight that can be attached to a Glock handgun the extra weight on the barrel affects accuracy where it says affects accuracy to be honest I don't even notice it at all all I know is once you get it go ahead and combine it with the Glock then bring the Glock out on its own Simon will go ahead and put the tack light on it and there you go press Z to toggle tack light on or off the tack light does not require any batteries awesome so now we have a much better source of light look how bright this is this is brilliant so you know previously I was running around like this dual wielding with the phone shooting shooting then when I had to reload I was getting the Glock out on its own reloading then going back like this we will not have that issue anymore we can simply shoot and reload freely this is pretty spooky music in here okay now I'm gonna go all the way to the top first because there will be a morphine syringe actually I don't even need it how many have I got obviously 10 I can't pick it up yeah fuck it I might get it on the way back so where we're going now I'll just quickly tell you guys we're going back to Ronald Street because if I bring up my inventory as you can see we have the Ronald Street key a key with the tag Ronald Street that's where we need to go and it's eventually gonna take us back to the apartments so we're gonna revisit the apartments here in this video now every other door in this immediate area is locked just go straight ahead through this one be careful there may be a faster okay maybe here no good sometimes they spawn sometimes they don't but there's always usually a drowned enemy here be very quick in killing it if you've got a firearm equipped because you don't want that telepathic bullshit going on where they make you go ahead and commit suicide okay let's exit and this will take us to Ronald Street <laughs> I love this part as soon as you come out of this door here all these slowers <laughs> oh shit this one came up okay I was gonna say they all just stand there I mean two of them are and you can easily just get a headshot on them it's like they glitched or something oops reload I don't really care I will take it and kill them with ease there we go there should be two more there's one what the fuck how many shots are they taking unbelievable gotta reload again there we go done okay so the Ronald Street key we use it on this door right here you unlock the door let's go through oh here we go this music to me signifies complete and total dread got some ammo on the floor here VP 70 magazine times two tape recorder there fuck listen to this music this music is basically saying to me don't you dare come in here stay out well I'm sorry but I'm gonna continue on here 
we'll go down this ladder. It's basically going to take us through the sewers, where there will be a lot of sumo enemies. Pretty tough enemies, like I said before. Probably almost one of the toughest enemies in the game. I mean, they're easy to take care of, but they just take an absolute beating to go down, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Okay, I'm just trying to get headshots. Here we go, done. And we will go down another ladder. Going down into the depths of hell. And I'm not really liking this music. It's making me quite anxious. Okay. Now, whatever you do, don't go ahead and run into this room because... I mean, it's probably hard to see, but in the water here, there are a ton of sumo enemies. And if you just go ahead and run into this room, they're all going to pop up, they're going to attack you, they're basically just going to surround you, gang rape you, and destroy you. So, what I like to do here is just sprint to where I need to go. So that's what I'm going to do. Yep, you can hear him coming up now. There will be one in the way. Quickly take care of him and jump over the pipe. And there you go. Fuck, look at them all. The thing is, we have to come back this way anyway, so I'm going to have to shoot them, but I will do that later. We'll climb this ladder here. Now, there is a fair bit of backtracking involved in this video, you know, I mean, we're going back through the Waspit Gardens again to get to Saxon Avenue. We're going back to the apartments. To be honest, this is my least favorite part of the game, simply because of all the backtracking. But don't you worry, once we get through this section, the game just gets even scarier and more fucked up. It's awesome. Okay, so here we are. This is the apartments. Look. This looks familiar. And we can't go inside. Something heavy is blocking the doors. We need to go in through the window. The window is open. How though? Well, we have to get a ladder. I'll show you where it is in a minute. But first, there's a tape recorder there if you want to save the game. Go down this alley here and it will lead you to the ladder. Be careful once you go near it. This wall busts open and we'll get attacked by two slowers, yep. No problem. Goodbye. And what have we got in here? Glock magazine, lovely. Is that it? Okay. It's very creepy going back inside the apartments. It's all changed now. Okay, a small ladder high enough to reach a window. Let's go ahead and use it. And we'll go inside. Oh no. More dreadful music. Dread inducing music. We've got a bit of a flood here. Now, basically, this is where we find the other fuse in the apartments here. So we're going to go ahead and collect it and then make our way back out the window. But as you can see, we need another ladder. I need a ladder to climb out again. So, I like to just get that out of the way straight off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and collect the ladder first. Put it in place, and then I will go and get the fuse. So that I can just make a quick exit, you know. Okay, and the ladder will be down here in the basement area. Look at it, it's all flooded. And we're going for a swim. You can hold the shift key to sprint swim, but, you know, that's one thing that really annoys me. Sprint swimming, so to speak, because it does absolutely nothing. I mean, here, I'm not holding shift. Now I am. Look, look at my stamina bar. Am I even going fast at all? It's pathetic. Sprint swimming 
does virtually nothing. It's atrocious. Sometimes he will speed up a little bit, but you know, it's hardly noticeable. So I just tend to swim normally without holding the sprint button down. So here we go. Look, I'm holding sprint. Still going slow as hell. And I'm completely out of stamina. Great. So I just picked up the ladder there. There's absolutely nothing else to do in the basement area. All the other routes are blocked off because of the water. It's completely flooded. So just get the ladder and get the hell out of there. And once you've got it, go ahead and put it in place. Prepare it for exit. And there you go. Okay, there's going to be a new enemy type up here. These guys are called the Strangers. There he is. They attack you telepathically. They're extremely creepy enemies. Basically, they're these guys in suits. And... Originally, I thought they had a box for their head, but from what I now know, it's actually an opened book. And you'll understand the significance of that as we go through the game further. But basically, what they do is they attack you telepathically once you get within range, close range. If you're too far away, they won't do anything except slowly walk towards you. But once they get within range, once you're close to them, then you will take damage. So you have to kill them as quick as possible to minimize the damage taken. Okay, we can't go that way, so we're going to go straight through this door here. There will be another stranger enemy. See, he slowly walks towards you. And as you can see, I'm not taking damage, but once he gets in range, see? start taking damage so kill that son of a bitch as quick as you possibly can god what the hell's going on here all these screams this music beating on doors and walls okay I'm gonna reload here because once you go in this room and collect the ammo that's on the floor and come back out there will be another stranger enemy right here so be prepared for it Watch. See? Kill him quickly to minimize the amount of damage taken. Alright, let's continue on. I might as well go ahead and use a syringe and grab that one. Give myself full health. Jesus, this music is out of control. Okay, there will be a faceless enemy to the right. There it is. Took care of it. What's happened to all this stuff? I've got no idea. Alright, let's exit out through this door. And we can't go that way. So we're going to go through this door here and make our way up the staircase a bit to get to level 3. Get your rifle out, there will be exactly two fly gears here. Fuck! Ah, he got me. God damn it. That's bullshit. Never mind. What the hell, where is he? Oh shit! Now. Okay, and there will be a faceless enemy right there. Look at how it's twitching. Look at this thing. Covered in blood. No face. Disgusting. Get the hell out of here. Okay, so we're on level 3 now. And, yep, more beating on the doors or walls. Tape recorder there. Okay, now as soon as you exit this apartment, there will be two more faceless enemies to take care of. So just run straight away, get a bit of distance going on. Oh shit, I'm trapped in the corner. Okay, there we go. They're taken care of. And we need to go straight ahead, duck under the bars, go through the door. And there's absolutely nothing on level 4 here. 
So where we need to go is through this door here, which says stop, do not enter. And it's completely covered in blood by the looks of it. And the chains are broken off. Let's go through. Jesus Christ, look at this apartment. What the hell happened here? It's just got blood everywhere. The roof, the walls, the doors, the kitchen, the table, the chair. What happened here? Okay, that's locked and so is that. Tape recorder there if you want to save the game and a morphine syringe. Now, if you're not on full health, I would strongly advise that you go ahead and heal to full health because coming up, once we go down here, in my opinion, this is pretty much one of the hardest parts of the game. It's not a boss fight. It's more like a little sub-boss fight where you have to take care of quite a few faceless enemies all at once. And they're very fast. You don't have much room to maneuver. So you can sort of get stuck in a corner. And if you do, they will just trap you and attack you until you die. The first time I played this game, I must have died about five to ten times on this fight. It is quite difficult, but I will show you guys how to get through it with relative ease. Now basically, by doing this so-called sub-boss fight with the faceless enemies down here, that will eventually net you the fuse that we've been after. So that's cool. We'll get the fuse after we do this. And also, once we go down here, we have to make our way to the faceless enemies via a long, dark hallway. And it is a very chilling part of the game as you're going through that hallway because you hear the doctor's voice speaking. It's just creepy. I don't know, it just really fucked me up the first time I played through this game. So here we go. He always goes back to the same place day after day. They just watch it like it was yesterday. Despite the fact that it causes him tremendous anxiety, he insists on returning. He insists it's for therapeutic reasons, but I remain skeptical. He doesn't respond well to questions about his personal life. He became extremely angry. Yep, so I find that very, very chilling for some reason. It made me extremely uneasy the first time I played through this game. Just this ambient music, this dark, long corridor, and you hear the doctor's voice. It's very haunting. Okay, so once you make it to the end of this long hallway, you reach a door. Be warned, once you go through, you are going to get attacked by four faceless enemies at once. So I'm going to just go ahead and do it here and show you guys how to do this so-called sub-boss fight. Okay, they come out of these cages. There we go. What you're going to do is constantly run around in circles. There isn't much room to maneuver and whatever you do, don't go down into these opened areas here because you will get stuck and you will get killed. They will overwhelm you. Fuck. It's easy to get stuck. When you don't even go down there anyway. Okay, and be careful of this giant face in the middle. If you go near it, you will take damage. I need to heal because these four faceless enemies are not the end of this fight. There will be two more. And I'll show you where they are. They're right there. Okay, so this gate sort of opens up. And they attack you once you kill the last remaining faceless here. So let's do it. And I should probably kill them with the rifle because they go down in one shot with it. 
Lovely. Trust me, guys, if you are not prepared for this fight, I can pretty much guarantee it, you will die. I mean, I made it look very easy there, but believe me, it is pretty difficult because it will take you off guard. Look at this face. Okay, so once you've taken care of all of them, go towards this door here. Yep, and once you hit the use button on it, Saw Runner appears and you drop down. All you do here is run. It's a very long, dark corridor. Just keep moving forward. Don't even take care of the faceless enemies that appear in this area. But I mean, look at them. It looks like they have a face now. Fucking hell. Disgusting. Go through the door. And this takes us back. Back to where we were. Back in the bloodied apartment. And now there is a fuse on the ground. Excellent. And I need that syringe. Now before I leave this apartment, I just want to mention one thing. You can actually go through this door once you've done that fight. However, there is absolutely nothing in here. This really perplexes me. I don't understand what the point of this is. I mean, the first time we came into this apartment, this door was locked. We couldn't get in here. But once you take care of all those faceless enemies and get the fuse, you can come in here. Why? What's the point? There's nothing here. You know, I've played this game so many times, that still burns me because I don't have an answer. It's just very weird. Okay, so let's drop down here, and we're basically done for the apartments. We can now exit, and yep, we got the ladder before. So let's go ahead and climb our way out. So we've got one fuse, and we need to collect the other one. We know where it is. Like I said, it's on Saxon Avenue. So we have to go back there and grab it by going through the Waspit Gardens. So there is quite a bit of backtracking involved here. <sighs> go down the ladder. Now remember all the sumos down here are still alive. We have to take care of them in order to get past. So I'm going to go ahead and use the rifle. Fuck, look at them all. Okay. Hopefully I can kill... I mean, I can't, I can't even see them. I'm just going to blind fire. And hope I kill... Okay, I don't think I killed. Fuck. I've got no ammo left. That's not good. Alright, well I'm just going to have to do well-placed headshots with the Glock. Look how tough these guys are. Six headshots. That is outrageous. Unbelievable. So strong, these sumo enemies. Get real. Okay, there we go. There are probably some more. Yeah. But I'm just going to run straight past. Only take care of the ones there that are in your way. Ignore and avoid all the others. Save your ammo. And we'll basically climb our way out of the sewers here. Still got one more ladder to climb. It will be over here. Okay, so we're finally out of the sewers. And we will go back to the Waspit Gardens. Now, like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and pick up that M16 rifle and take it with me to the Waspit Gardens because there are quite a number of slower enemies that spawn there. So I will use it on them. Now to get out of here very quickly, just go down one, two, oh fuck, what am I doing? Idiot. <laughs> go up one, 
two flights of stairs and there you go the exit is right here go up two flights of stairs not down two sorry okay so we've made it back to the bus and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the okay yep so what I like to do here is drop this fuse because I can't carry any more items with it still in my inventory so that's allowed me to grab the M16 rifle now once I get the other fuse from Saxon Avenue I will come back here and grab that one and take both of them down into the subway area and put them in place and go through the door okay so here we are Wasped Gardens now look look at this giant monstrosity this enemy is called fuck not fuck <laughs> they're actually called taller's because I guess of how tall they are they move very slow and as long as you don't go anywhere near them you will be fine problems start arising once you get very close to them because what they do is they hit you and it will send you flying fuck God damn it you damn slow as piss off they just appear out of nowhere half the time bloody frustrating yeah so if you get close to one of these taller enemies they will hit you it will send you flying and you'll become stunned you'll become incapacitated for quite a few seconds and if they get close to you while you're stunned they will stomp on you and they will crush you to death it is an instant kill move so my word of advice for dealing with those taller enemies is don't go anywhere near them they just have a very intimidating presence don't they I mean look at them they're giants they walk slow as hell they're silent but their footsteps are very loud okay so there should be yep there's another slower there take care of him fuck reload now there's a few ditches to dig out here in this specific area of the Waspet Gardens I will do that okay there's a taller there coming down so there's a ditch there there's a ditch right there it's pretty dark there it is there's the other one fuck god I'm getting trapped here by the taulers look at this get me out Whew. lucky they can only walk like that you know it makes going through this area pretty tricky because you have to constantly be on the move you can't really stop for one second okay so I'll drop the M16 rifle grab the shovel and I'm gonna go back and dig out those two ditches okay that taller is just standing still hopefully he stays there okay come on quickly dig it out before I get swarmed by these taulers VP70 magazine that wasn't even worth it he's stuck too oh shit no he's moving again <laughs> Go away! Just let me dig out this ditch. I'm gonna risk it. Do it. Fuck. Don't hit me. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. I'm playing very risky here. Out, out, out. Go. Run, Simon. Run. Good. Okay, and there will be one more ditch right here so I will dig that up and collect the item another M16 magazine alright I'm done with the shovel no more ditches drop it re-pick up the M16 I need light let's go and this will basically take us back into the main area of the Waspet Gardens remember we came here in chapter 3 so basically as you can see I just dug out that ditch there and that one as well as that one 
basically where the three X's are. So, we're going back to Saxon Avenue now. And remember, we need to go through Teal Trading to get there. Just be careful in this immediate area because there will be quite a number of enemies to take care of. Fasters, suiciders, and... Oh shit, burst fire, I don't want that. And when you go through Teal Trading, there will be a couple of strangers to take care of. Okay, there'll be another suicider right here. Oh my god. What an absolute fucking mess that was. One more suicider right here. Lovely, he's done. Grab the Glock ammo. Bang, let's go to Teal Trading. And like I said, there will be two stranger enemies in here. The first one will be right there. There he is. Look at him. He just walked through the wall. So yeah, see how he's got a book for a head? Okay, go away please. God, it's so dark. That's better. Okay, and the other stranger will be right there basically just to the right so yep he's done and that's it we'll go outside through this door and that will take us to Saxon Avenue and I'm gonna re-equip the M16 rifle here because there will be quite a few slowers to take care of and I'm just going to round them up. Yep, they're all following me. Lovely. Just be careful not to get stuck on anything. Otherwise they will hit you. Okay, they're all done. And down here is where the fuse is located. But there's also a suicider. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Blew his brains out. Okay, inventory full. I won't be needing the M16 rifle anymore, so I can drop that, and there you go. We now have two fuses. Well, I've got one in my inventory at this stage, but the other one is back where that bus was, so I have to go back and collect it. Also, once you collect that fuse right there on Saxon Avenue, you get this music playing. To me, this music sort of signifies hope. You know, out of all the shit Simon's been through so far, it makes me feel like there's a bit of hope for him. A light at the end of the long, dark tunnel. I should probably heal. I am quite low. Might as well. go lovely you know I've got plenty of morphine syringes so that won't hurt taking one of them and back through the Waspet Gardens we go lots of backtracking so we're basically just gonna go through this door here you can go through this door or that one, it doesn't really matter. They'll basically take you to the other side of the Waspet Gardens where the three taulers are. Just make sure you break the three boards off, otherwise you won't be able to come back through said door. Oh, this is good. Fuck, they're blocking the way. I'm gonna risk it. Fuck! Jesus. Okay, now as you go back, through this wall will bust two sumo enemies. I'm not going to bother taking care of them. I'm just going to grab the ammo and run straight past. It's kind of pointless even grabbing that ammo because 
for starters I don't have a VP70 handgun and also at this stage I will be dropping the rifle because I won't be needing it anymore so I just picked up ammo for it for no reason okay so there you go we've got the two fuses let's go back and put them in place down in the subway area where that locked door was and we can once again continue following that doctor once we go through that door you know that's when the game starts getting real real scary trust me you ain't seen nothing yet believe me god damn it stamina come on So we'll go down this escalator here and we will put the two fuses in place. One there, one there. Grab the syringe. Okay, we can now go through. Once we go down this escalator here, there will be exactly four suiciders in this area to take care of. The first one will be immediately to my right, so I'm just going to sprint. Oh, he got me. Bastard. There'll be another one right up there, so I'm just going to hide behind this chip machine here. Wait till he gets close. Yep, beautiful. And there'll be one right there. Fuck! Got me. This is a very difficult part on nightmare mode. there will be one on the tracks down there probably very hard to see but I can just see him okay let me go back and grab the Glock ammunition lovely these two doors are locked so where we need to go is this way up the stairs or up the escalator if you choose Listen to this sound. It sounds like a dog panting. Doesn't it? What the hell is going on? Okay, it's gone now. Alright, so. We come to this wall here. And if you examine it. Looks like this wall can be broken. That is correct. It can be. However, we need a sledgehammer to break it. So that is our next immediate goal, to acquire a sledgehammer and break down that wall, which will reveal a door which we need to go through. The train to Norcastle is delayed due to a signal malfunction. Please stand well clear of the platform and the gates, as the next train is not for public use. Yep, okay. And at the top there, bring both fuses from the blue line to escape with the train. So once again, we have to go back, collect the two fuses, and put them in place here. By doing so, that will open this gate, and we can finally leave in this train, and hopefully make our way home. Or will we? You will see. Tape recorder there. Look at this. I want my feet back. I wonder what that can mean. You'll find out a bit later on. But basically this is where the sledgehammer is located inside of this train. Just go all the way down to the end of this carriage and there it is. On your way back a slow up will appear. Take care of him. One hit, he'll drop. The sledgehammer is a very powerful melee weapon but it's extremely slow. This is the only time in the whole game I use it. Look at that. What a fucking joke. This weapon is terrible. You've got to sort of time the attack at the correct moment. So you press the left mouse button to start the swing. And then as it's about to hit, that's when you move forward towards your opponent. 
but we'll go ahead back to where that wall was and break it down using this sledgehammer and once we do I'm gonna drop it I never use the sledgehammer ever again three hits will break the wall there we go now I can drop this piece of shit and we'll go through the door now this is when things start getting really messed up really messed up I mean it looks like we came from that way doesn't it where are we if you go down here look at this it's like curved and shit what the hell is going on what happened to this place I can't even get down to that door so obviously you can't go that way where you need to go is down here <laughs> what's going on look at this okay now I'm gonna save the game here because I usually die at least once in this area simply because of the jumps sometimes I miss time a jump and I fall straight down so I would strongly recommend to you guys that you do the same as well make sure you save here a lot of sprint jumping involved look at this there's a guy in a cage cutting himself cutting his arm what the fuck another one up there another one right here this guy's cutting his leg look there's all these moaning wailing screams in the background get me out of here another one there this is a dark and depressing twisted place we're in at the moment obviously it's like a whole other world sequence this part can be a bit confusing as to where to go but I'll show you just drop down here you'll take a bit of damage but it's not too bad drop down here okay and here we just do a jump no need to hold shift to do a sprint jump there make your way all the way up walk forward fuck yeah it can be a bit tight navigating the way through this area you can easily fall off a couple of sprint jumps one more fuck made it yeah it can be quite tight going through that area because in the past you know more specifically the first time I went through that area I was going through it very delicately and by delicately I mean just nudging forward like this you know slowly inch by inch at a time and there was a couple of times where I actually did this by accident you know I tapped forward twice in a row in rapid succession and he fell straight off the edge just be very careful because you can easily fall off whether it be going left right forward or back okay and this basically leads us to a room it looks like it's got padded walls and we have four doors each door has a symbol this door has a symbol of an opened book this one has a symbol of a car that one's got a wheelchair and that one has a gun basically what we need to do here is go through each door in a specific order because if you don't you'll basically just come to the same room like so every time so we need to go through the doors in a specific order how do you know what order to go through them in well basically look down and read this note my life that fateful night the child lay upon the road broken why did you have to walk that way so late young man why did you have to be so foolish disillusioned and embittered by his parents words the child was broken physically broken mentally the men in white placed him in the rolling chairs how he laughed how he laughed and so he lived what remained of his life one day fate smiled upon the child and so he came upon the implement of his destruction decisions decisions the outcome was not certain pro captu lectoris habent sua fata labelli i have no idea what that means 
So there you go, that's basically giving you a clue as to what order you need to go through the doors in. So let's examine this note a bit more carefully. That fateful night the child lay upon the road broken. So if you remember, Simon got hit by the car. So we need to go through the car door first. And if we keep reading, it will say, yeah, the child was broken physically, broken mentally, okay? So he was fucked up, he had to be put in a wheelchair. So that is the next door we go through. And if we keep reading even further, Yep, and so he came upon the implement of his destruction. So Simon thought of committing suicide and that signifies the gun. So we go through the gun door next. And after we've gone through all those doors, then we finally go through this one with the opened book on it, which basically signifies Simon's life. So let's do it. It's car, wheelchair, gun, and the opened book. And there you go, we're finally out of that padded room. There's a tape recorder there. So, drop down here. And if you look at this map, I need to head to the exit. We're in a bit of a maze here, and we need to make it to the exit. This map is a mess, this area is a mess. So basically what I like to do is just hug the wall to the right, and whenever I can go right, I basically just go right. That's all I do. If you follow this method, it will take you to the exit. It's probably not the quickest way, but you'll get there, trust me. And along the way, you'll encounter these enemies. They're called the Hanged Men. They aren't very dangerous. Just don't go near them, because I believe if you even touch them, you will die in one hit. I don't really die too often on these guys because I just patiently wait for them to go past. I'm not even sure if they can be killed. I don't think they can be. So all I'm going to be doing here is going right, hugging the wall to the right. Right, right, right. That's all you have to remember here. No need to really rush either. There's no time pressure. And there you go, we come to a door, and once we move towards it, we'll get a cutscene. Yes, he suffered severe spinal damage in the accident. It's a miracle he still retains upper body motion. From the waist down, however, there is no nervous response at all. Not to mention the mental trauma he suffered. From what I can tell, Simon is a deeply disturbed individual who had mental problems even prior to the accident. <coughs> Okay, so that is it guys, that is the end of chapter 4, and we are now up to chapter 5, called Leaving This For Good. So as usual, I will leave it here, and I will see you next video, where we go through chapter 5. I'm out.